Hello everyone, my name is Luka Novaković and I will be presenting a demonstration regarding the battery components in Typhoon Hill library. The first component I will be discussing is the battery component. This is a component we've had for a while and this component is modeled as a voltage source in series with a resistor. This model has a number of options which I will now explain and a proper documentation on the help button will then further clarify any additional questions. Battery type property enables the user to select within one of the preset battery types. Each of them will have a different set of parameters which are not allowed to be changed but there will also be some parameters such as nominal voltage capacity and the initial state of charge that are able to be manipulated. The other option is to have a user defined battery where all of the parameters are able to be modified. There is also a button which helps plot the curve of the voltage, the terminal voltage of this component with the state of discharge. Another option is to go into the signal processing tab and have the output of this component as a state of charge output in signal processing. This will then again have another port on this component which can be routed into some additional logical circuitry or measurements. The execution rate for this signal processing port is then uh, defined in the execution rate tab property. Uh, use signal processing lookup table will then allow for the lower load of the FPGA and the SPC resources to actually have the lookup table defining the open circuit voltage dependent on the state of charge as in uh, signal processing lookup table. This component is not very flexible but it is easily parameterized and has some predefined presets which can be easily understood. Another option is to use a battery cell component which is our newer component and this component is much more flexible with its properties meaning that the properties can be enabled or disabled to represent a very basic model of the battery or a very advanced model of the battery. The model is not created to simulate all the battery types, but rather lithium-ion battery. However, with the parameters defined here, uh, it seems that a lot of other batteries can be represented because of the flexibility of this component. Therefore, some other battery types, not only lithium-ion, can also be presented with this kind of model if the user knows the manual and the data of the battery and how to parameterize this component. So to begin we start with the state of charge vector which is only needed right now for the open circuit voltage. Open circuit voltage is always a function of the state of charge vector and cannot be a single value. However, it can also be a nested Pythonic list or depending on how you look at it, it can be a matrix or a 2D list that also depends on the temperatures vector. If defined in such a way that it is a nested list, the temperatures vector must be defined and the dimensions must match, otherwise a proper error will be reported in the console. Initial state of charge is just like in the batteries, battery component, an initial state of charge that the model begins with once compiled. The state of health vector is defaulted at zero, but it can be a vector on which there are some dependencies such as internal resistance, Coulombic efficiency and total capacity. Again, with internal resistance, which is just a series with, uh, with which is just a resistor in series within open circuit voltage, this component or this property and the resistor value can be a function of temperature if defined that way, it can also be a constant and it can also be a 2D nested list and in that case it would need to have a proper dimension match with the state of health vector. The same goes for the Coulombic efficiency which is applied only to the charging of the battery cell component. 
meaning if the battery cell is being charged, the state of charge is not increased by the number of coulombs that is going inside the battery, but rather a coulombic efficiency is applied. This property can be left at 1 as a constant to ignore this property altogether. So once again, internal resistance is a function of temperature and state of health, coulombic efficiency as well, and so is the total capacity of the battery cell. Now, battery cell can have the total capacity definition of the amp hours or the capacity of the battery, or it can have a discharge capacity definition. This depends only on how the battery manufacturer has provided the, uh, the capacity of the battery parameter. It is also then again a function of temperature and state of health. A number of battery cells in parallel defines how many ideal battery cells in parallel with this one battery cell component will be simulated. This means that if I write here a number 2 or 3, I will have 3 battery cells in parallel with the exactly same parameters. What that would mean is that they would share the same temperature, share the same voltage and therefore same all, share all the same parameters defined over here. For the user to have 3 battery cells in parallel, this would only mean that the impedance of the battery has internal resistance and through the fusion processes, which I will cover later. And uh, these, these values will actually be divided by the number of cells in parallel, while the capacity defined whichever way will be increased a number of times defined here. So battery cells in parallel can be estimated here or can be written here and therefore simulated with the amount, that amount of battery cells in parallel without additional computational load. Meaning to have here a number of battery cells in parallel over a hundred would also not make the simulation more, uh, res more resource heavy. So the execution rate is another property which is very important because this battery cell, unlike the battery component, is integrated only in the execution, only in the signal processing part. Meaning that uh, the voltage source representing the battery cell terminals, positive and negative, is controlled only with the signal processing control, which takes into consideration all of these parameters. The execution rate can be left at 100 microseconds most often, because the battery cell dynamics is not needed to be faster than this, but for some use cases, maybe faster dynamics is expected. Therefore, this execution rate can be lowered or can be increased for some components or some uh, scenarios where battery cell execution rate is not needed to be this high. And oftentimes it can be increased to even 500 microseconds or more. Uh, another important thing to mention is that both of these components can be run on any hill and any configuration and uh, it is also important to note that no toolbox is needed to use these components. To have battery cells in parallel I have already shown how to do that, but how to make battery cells in series is then uh, done by multiplying the number of components or by dragging more components named battery cell and then connecting them in whichever way the user wants to connect and configure these devices. Then the next step would be to connect the load to the positive terminal of the uppermost battery cell and the negative terminal of the lowermost battery cell. This now represents a battery pack of three batteries in series, with each of these batteries possibly having different parameters. Also, these battery cells do not necessarily share the same temperature. The temperature is an input port as a signal processing port going inside each and every battery cell, meaning we can create faults within each battery cell that is in series. And to have, the, have them off balanced, to have them with different voltage to test the passive balancing in the reaction of the battery management system. Another important thing to mention is the diffusion process. As this component was created to model lithium-ion batteries, 
which is not necessarily the only battery kind of kind that can be simulated with this component. Uh, the fusion process is often modeled as a number of impedances connected in series. These impedances to re represent the diffusion of lithium ions inside the batteries can be modeled as parallel resistor capacitor circuits. We enable for three of them at this point in time, or none of them, up to three. Then these resistor capacitors can be defined if the user knows how to define them. Therefore, none is the easiest option if the user has no data. Voltage hysteresis is a complex property also seen in lithium ion batteries, but more on that can be seen in help button. The balancing circuit is also an important tab, as this battery cell component does not need additional circuitry for cell balancing. Instead, it is defined in this balancing circuit tab whether balancing circuit will be present or not. If it is present the, uh, by selecting passive in this combo box, we enable the parallel resistor to be connected in the battery cell within this component with an ideal switch which will control whether or not the balancing is happening or not. Here we define the value in ohms of this balancing parallel resistor. I will define it as 1. What this will now mean when I say OK is that the input which was now until now only temperature is now a vectorized input and the second input is a digital signal which enables or disables balancing. Enabling balancing is a digital input of one which can come from a microcontroller or from a model and it will enable the current to flow through this passive balancing resistor through the terminals of the battery cell and thus decrease the state of charge of the battery cell. Another option is to define a direct current input which can be useful in some scenarios where the current flowing through the actual BMS, hardware BMS, outside of our model can be fed back as a current measurement and fed here as an analog input to the battery cell. Therefore, whatever is happening outside of the hill in the battery management system can actually be uh, modeled and fed back as the balancing current through this battery cell meaning that this analog signal uh, offset and then with the applied gain can flow into the battery cell and uh, draw the current away from the battery cell as if it was its own ba uh, balancing current. Another tab is the measurements tab where we can enable all kinds of measurements to be available in the SCADA window. By deselecting all of these components, we reduce the complexity of the model. More on all of these properties can be found in our documentation, which can be reached by clicking Help. Aside from all this, it is important to mention that even though we have a lot of properties here, it is not too difficult to also include additional dependencies such as the resistor and capacitor uh, which represent the diffusion process uh, dependence on their own temperature, current or state of charge or all of them combined as another lookup table. It is just that we have right now concluded that this was enough for our current customers but it is again possible to extend the functionality of this battery cell component. Also, more resistor capacitor circuits can be added and more dependencies of these parameters can be also added. This concludes the demo for the battery cell and battery component. Thank you for listening.